Hello, good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. We are going over last uh, last week. We talked about um, one key to prayer, and this week we're going to talk about uh, key number two. So, key number two is the difference between praying from the old person who was dead to Christ or the old person who um, is steeped in religion. And uh, we are going to work on praying and uh, work on praying from the new person who is being transformed into God's image. So, key number two is God is always prepared. God knows the end from the beginning, which means that he has been to your tomorrows. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, The Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will also be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not be fearful nor be dismayed. And that to me is one of the most beautiful scriptures in the entire Bible. He will not leave you nor forsake you. So do not be fearful. Do not be dismayed. He goes ahead of us. He walks alongside of us and he never leaves. The new covenant based on the inheritance of Jesus in us is far superior to the old covenant written in stone. And that is Hebrews 8, 6 through 13, which says, But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. And speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete, and what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. The covenant written in our heart and mind empowers us to walk with God in Jesus so that we will know him in a new and living way, a way that is alive. The new covenant written in the blood of Jesus makes the old covenant obsolete. Jesus talked about preparation to his disciples in John 14, 2. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. That place is your habitation in Christ. And that is Ephesians 2, 22. Christ, in whom you are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Imagine that. We are co-constructed as God's permanent spiritual residence. That means God's address is you. He has prepared whatever you need, and the Spirit is present to guide you until you find it, it what you need. 
So prayer becomes the relational place where we abide, listen, and receive the provision that belongs to Jesus in us. As a new creation in Christ, we are not looking for spiritual resolution as proof that he hears us. We know that every circumstance is an opportunity to encounter another aspect of God's nature. We've talked frequently about not allowing our circumstances to define who God is. So let me read that again. As a new creation in Christ, we are not looking for spiritual resolution as proof that God hears our prayers. We know that every circumstance is an opportunity to encounter another aspect of God's nature. In John 11, 38 through 46, Jesus was standing on the outside of the tombs of Lazarus and he prayed, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but for the sake of the people who are standing here, I said it is so that they may believe. So what you are reading here is the promise of answered prayer as part of your inheritance in Jesus. A life of prayer as the new person in Christ is one of quiet, quietly confident expectations. We expect the Father to be faithful to, to Jesus in us. We anticipate that the Redeemer will make every situation redemptive. We know that in Christ, everything carries a yes and amen. As we practice abiding in him, as we pray with him, his intention becomes clear and we pray in alignment and faith with him. We are simply learning to live with God as dearly loved children. We are his beloved. Simple trust in God's living nature and powers of faith that works by love. And that is Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Whatever we need to talk, uh, whatever we need to talk about with God in the same manner as Jesus has already been deposited in us by God's presence. Our prayers reflect his confidence. God uses his expectation in Jesus to reprogram our emotions in line with his own nature. God is always prepared to back Christ in us 100%. And that is the simplicity of the good news, the uncomplicated trust of a child with a good father. It is vital to see ourselves in Jesus, living in the heart of God, and to value the process that makes those truths become our reality in the kingdom. This is the life we practice with the three, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, who create and redeem and empower us constantly and consistently. Now, prayer is one of the greatest benefits of life as a new creation in Christ. Our confidence rises because Jesus and the Holy Spirit are uh, permanent in us. They are permanently residing in us. John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. John 14, 20. In that day, 
you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. John 15, 4, Abide, dwell, live in me, and I will dwell, I will live in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. John seventeen twenty one, That they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. John seventeen twenty three, I, Christ, in them, and you, Father, in me. John seventeen twenty six, That the love with which you, Father, loved me, Christ, may be in them, and I, Christ, in them. We focus on who God is and who we are in him. And therefore, prayer is answered differently in the new person. We no longer are moved to tell God what we want, but are moved to know who he is in every single situation. Romans 8, 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Prayer then becomes an act of seeking God for his promises of who he is in each of us and what he is already doing for each of us through the power that is at work within us. Colossians 1.12 Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in lights. Now God is not only with us and in us, but he has also gone before us. Deuteronomy 31.8 The Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. God lives outside of time. He has prepared whatever it is that we need. And that's in John 14 that we're going to read in just a minute. We are secure in our identity as the beloved of Christ, heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. Romans 8, 17. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. So when we pray, we aren't coming from a point of wondering if God has made the provision for us. We are looking to see where his provision already is. 2 Timothy 1.12 For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So when we pray, we pray from the new person who is in Christ, not the old person, just asking God to stop some things or to start some things up or to deposit different things in our lives. When we pray from the new person, uh, we pray from a position um, of a child going to a loving and kind and thoughtful father. This is how we can pray. 
I'm going to say a prayer now for, uh, for my church. So let's pray. Father, you know all things and your name is holy. Thank you, Father, for the dedication you have planted within your children here. Father, you are good and we have seen your goodness. You work all things for the benefit of those who love you. And we love you, Father. Lord God, we know that you have not caused any bad thing to happen to us. And we know that you have made your home with us. God, we love you because you saved us and you set us apart from the world. You have given us your spirit and you are active in our lives and in the life of this church. We serve you, Father, because you love us and we want to see you work in the lives of the people in this community. You have given us a love and appreciation for everyone who serves you in this church. Father, help us lift up your son so you may draw others to yourself through this church and your children. Father, glorify yourself in this church and show us your goodness. God, we trust you, we believe in you, and we know you have good things for us, even as we press in toward our calling and our hope to witness your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now I encourage you to sit down quietly with your computer, your phone, or a pen and paper. And just sit quietly and ask the Holy Spirit how to pray. You have circumstances in your life, you have situations, you have trouble in this world. God knows that, he's well aware of that. And honestly, all of us struggle with why doesn't God just take care of these things? Why does he let bad things happen to good people? But the thing is, when you really know God, you begin to understand that he has already taken care of just about everything. It's it's a new kind of prayer where you're asking for what is already present. You're just asking him to pray for you and through you. You're praying to know the Father. You're praying to know where he is in the good circumstances and the bad circumstances. And you are connecting yourself with him to co-labor with him in doing his work, which is spreading his love and spreading his goodness. So why pray and ask for these worldly things when we can talk to God and witness him moving and operating in our lives. Witness his problem, his presence manifesting in the midst of our problems. We don't have to face any of these problems alone. Miracles do happen, but they're frequent. They're the, the frequency of true miracle is the love that can grow in your heart and the connection that you can have with God. The peace that passes all understanding is nothing short of a miracle. The presence of God in our lives is a miracle. Healing the sick, walking on water, wonderful. But it is God who teaches us how to be wealthy. Now, if we were going after the things of the world, 
and we are anxious about the things of the world, and we go to God out of that anxiety, nothing's going to happen except more anxiety and probably a touch of frustration. But if you really go to God the way that he has already come to you, then your prayers will be answered. It's very simple, very basic. All you have to do is believe him when he says, remain in me. I'm already remaining in you. Come to me as dearly loved children, realizing that you are joint heirs with Christ. And then you can begin to design prayers. And if you need any help designing a prayer for your specific situation, just drop me an email. It'll be in, in the link below. Send me a text. Uh, there are plenty of ways of getting a hold of me um, under this video or on top of it or wherever I put the information. So you are loved. Don't ever forget that. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a text, drop me an email. Um, one of us are always here. So God bless you. Thank you for listening.